I've been a foster carer now for seven years and um, I can say it's had its challenges but I wouldn't change it for the world. It's been great, absolutely great. We did purposely go for the teenagers. Um, it was an age group that we felt comfortable with. Um, there are advantages to having teenagers. They have their mood swings and, and everything else, but they're, they're also actually really good fun, being that you, know, you can actually have a proper conversation and there is some leeway for negotiation with teenagers, far more than there are with, say, babies or um, young children. The more independent. Uh, you're not having to find babysitters if you want to go out. Relationship forming is easier, I feel because you're a little bit more on a wavelength. It is a responsibility and it is probably going to give you experiences that you've never had before. And most of them actually are quite challenging and quite enjoyable at the end of it. I will say I've been really, really lucky because all my kids were great. But you do have the occasion, they do push those boundaries. Problems sometimes arise. Um, and and it's just about being the good listening ear, really, to be able to listen to that young person's fears, worries, concerns. Well, I've had Jamie now for six years, and um, when he first came, he was <laughs> very challenging. I used to get in fights every day out of school, and I'd be getting excluded, and I needed to, to take my anger out. Boxing. People say to me, why take him boxing? because I wanted to show him that it was another way of expressing the emotions that he had inside. And he's doing remarkably well at boxing. It's the discipline behind it. And that discipline is 100% transferred into his school and now into his college. Boxing has been a massive part to Jamie's uh, growth and development as a young kid. Vicky has done the same now. You know, she came to us, she'd already tried independent living, hated it because she didn't feel ready. From where I was when I first came into foster care and now having a job, a car, I've been in so many placements that it's taught me who I am today. Like I, I really don't think I, if I had even been at home, if I'd have still had the mindset, I don't think I'd have had half of the things I do now. I think I've done, I think foster care has really brought the better out in me. When Holly came, she didn't have a lot of interest in anything, but she did say she wanted to ride horses and there happens to be a stable, you know, two or three miles down the road. And she was so enthusiastic and worked so hard at it, we eventually did buy her a little pony. And so it has paid dividends with her because it's improved her confidence, it's improved her ability to communicate with other children and, and, and just be not socialised with socialised that's very good yeah and I think it's been very good for her not been so good for me perhaps but. <laughs> well I don't think you need to be concerned about um, fostering teenagers because in my experience um, there's always plenty of support for you if you come across problems right from the get go they've matched you as well as they can match you so that you've got a good start and if you come across problems, there's so many people in the background to help. You've got a supervising social worker uh, who's there for you, not for the child. So she's always there at the end of the phone if you've got problems. You have the child's social worker. As they get older, they also have a PA, so you can tap into the resources there. The No Wrong Door is um, a service that's been set up through um, North Yorkshire County Council. The services have been set up so it allows children to not be in children's homes and to be able to live in the community as part of a normal family environment um, with the consistency, stability and care that's provided by foster carers and supported lodgings providers. Like the difference between the normal foster carer and the no wrong door foster carers is the extra support that you get. So like uh, we've got a speech and language therapist somebody who's in charge of education. We've also got uh, counsellors and people who come and do outreach. When I was at the children's home, um, there was about six of us and it was very stressful. So when my social worker rang me to say that she had a foster parent, I was relieved. 
a young girl, Natalie, she's she came to us at 15. She's 22 now and you know, she's got a job, she's got a flat, uh, she's got a partner and she's just happy in life. I've supported a lot of young people um, and being part of that process in their lives is very important to me. Um, and I will cherish the memories throughout my life of how those young people have touched my life. Probably, probably like maybe 10 years now, we had a knock on the door oh, and, and there was this young lady who would foster, I think she might have been nine or ten when we fostered her. She knocked on our door. It's night time, she'd, it's dark, she'd wasn't it? traced us, we'd moved house twice since we fostered her, so she'd, she'd somehow managed to find us. And she'd had a little baby, hadn't she? Mm. She wanted to bring her first baby to show us. Mm. And you know, we had this girl we probably hadn't seen for maybe 12, 15 years. And it was such a, you know, a unique moment in time that, you know, I just couldn't believe it really. It was just... I don't think you actually have to be a parent to be a foster carer. I think you just have a caring nature. And you have to be quite laid back, I think. To be able to listen. Not to let words affect you. They understand you, they give advice rather than telling you what to do. Firm but fair. Patience, understanding. Endurance. Have a sense of humour. Dedication. Time to listen. You've got to be adaptable. Empathy. Compassion. Be yourself. That little boy found something in my dad, you know. That makes me feel good, you know. That makes me feel good about what I've got. I'd like to introduce a kid in care into a nice, welcoming family. So they feel like I felt when I joined David and PJ. They're all little bundles and they've all got their own way to go in life and then it's up to you to help them to achieve what they, what they can achieve.